Distinguished guests, welcome to another edition of Sword and Scratch. And I am Evil Chicken, the half humble host to the other half of my humble hosting. Hi, I am the Eagle Fan. Welcome back, everybody. I have got a little bit of history, a little bit of rock and roll. And a whole lot of awesome coming for my friend over there. Well, this I am intrigued. Awesome. This <laughs> is Sabaton. We are going with another animated story. Excellent. This is Night... Oops. It would help if I could spell. Oh my god. Night wishes. <laughs> <laughs> a very, very different story <laughs> yeah it sort of changes the uh changes the whole kind of it was very christmasy before okay once upon a time <laughs> this, this shows you where my mind is i was thinking 70s porn <laughs> I think Bob Seeker sang that, didn't he? <laughs> uh, night moves, night close enough. <laughs> so, yes. Are you ready to learn a little history? I need all the help I can get. So, yes. That's one of the things that I've really come to love from this particular band. Um, they, uh, they are historians. Um, and, and, the stories they tell are it's all real it's all based in fact ah this band it. and some other videos that i've seen yes make me wonder why history class isn't different because if i saw these things in in history class i would have yeah. learned stuff a lot more you know um you bring up an interesting point a very interesting point. I think they just, I think, how did he put it? Uh, George Carlin, I think he said, he, he wants, it wasn't him, he said, uh, they want us, they being those in power, to be able to uh, just uh, be smart enough to put the square pegs into the square holes <laughs> and, and not to question anything. So I think it's important to uh, learn from history and to uh, question everything. So, I'm very curious as to what this is. Okay. There we are. <laughs> are you ready for some Sabaton history? I am ready for some history. Okay. Thank you. May I have another? <laughs> Here we go. This is also done by, what was it called? Yarn? What? Bar Yarn? Bar? I forget what it was called. It's the same, same company that did the other... Uh, video that we saw oh excellent excellent that was wow yeah here we go the germans are resting behind the lines of the eastern front their tents in neat rows all is in order in the quiet and still of the night it's cold and the winter snow crunches under the jackboot of a guard looking up into the sky the snow starts to drift down it's peaceful here was that a noise from the sky no, it's just the wind. Suddenly, piercing the still of the night, there's an otherworldly scream and a whoosh as a dark form speeds by. And was that a woman's laughter in the distance? There are no engine sounds and the suddenly fearful German soldier loses his footing and whispers under his breath, Die Nachthexen. The world is all at once a bloom of fire and ash and two more dark forms pass without a sound. Hearing the whooping and celebration of these supernatural creatures, the guard shakes himself from his fear and calls out, Die Nachthexen! Die Nachthexen! The Night Witches! In the sky above, three planes of the soon-to-be-famous 588th Night Bomber Regiment, their engines now running, turn east for home. Time to rearm and refuel for another mission. Coming into land, they're greeted by their commissar, Yevdokia Reshkevich. 
The young girls that form the pilots and navigators are between the ages of 17 and 26. They are desperate to take the fight to the Germans and have traveled from all over Russia to join the all-women regiments. The 588th is where the least skilled of all the women are placed. But that didn't stop them from carving their name in history. In the early days, they were largely ridiculed by the Soviet men. Given men's uniforms that were too big and shoes all of the same size, the women did the best they could with the clothes, making them fit with belts or filling the large men's shoes with stuffing. The equipment they were given was woefully out of date. The Polykarpov PO2 was a two-man trainer, underpowered and made of cloth and wood. These old string bags were nicknamed crop dusters, or even worse, sewing machines due to the noise their tiny engines made. But the women of the 588 ignored the taunts, and despite the odds, turned the plane's shortcomings to their advantage. The planes at maximum speeds were far below the stall speeds of any of the German fighters giving them a tight turning circle. They were almost impossible to hit. They were susceptible to small arms fire and anti-aircraft guns. So their strategy was to attack in threes with a navigator in each plane. At her signal, the pilot would cut the engines and swoop in slowly, silently, dropping their bombs, dealing death from above. Unexpected, undetected, stealth perfected. If necessary, the other two would draw fire from the fighters or from the ground. They slept during the day and rose at dusk to take their vengeance on the invaders. This unnatural bravery and their stealth tactics earned them their title, the Night Witches. The German ace, Johannes Steinhoff said, we simply couldn't grasp that the Soviet airmen that caused us the greatest trouble were in fact women. These women feared nothing. Okay, a oh, yarn hub. <laughs> Before gotcha. we get too much farther, early thoughts on this. Remarkable, um, absolutely remarkable. Um, I'm I'm such an ignorant man, um, and uh, I I find this fascinating because there's there's much to learn. I assume this is um, World War Two because. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The Germans have invaded uh, Stalinist Russia, and Stalinist Russia was no easy place to be. <laughs> um, horrible, horrible um, living conditions. Um, it's 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 amazing. A lot of these women, they probably found it easier to serve on the front lines than to live in wherever they were from. Um, starvation was a huge thing in Stalinist Russia. So it was um, just an insane political ideology. Um, and I'm not just, I'm not saying, I'm not talking communism. I'm talking about Stalin was dangerous. <laughs> he was a dangerous man. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so you have two for lack of a better word, madmen. You got Adolf Hitler and you got Stalin, Joseph Stalin, and uh, two dictators that are going against each other. Just unbelievable. It's such a strange time in history. But, yeah, you know, horrible, I, I horrible digress. time. Oh my God, horrible. Absolutely. But uh, So yeah, I would imagine that the Night Witches were happy to be putting their lives on the line, if you will. Um, I like them. these stories because I get to learn so much that I didn't know yeah. about before. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Holy cow. And if history class could be like this. Dave, exactly. I, I, you know, I mean, I don't know. It would be nice if they taught critical thinking. <laughs> and, 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 oh, and part exactly. of that was part of living history like this. Yeah. You know. It's uh, definitely, and then you know, you know, seal the deal with an excellent Sabaton song. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, are you ready yes. for that? Bring it. Some would have loaded looking for the foe. Others 
can hide, you can move Just to fight the attacks they bruise In the dark Silent through the night, the witch is on the fight Thirty-two women, both pilots and navigators, never came home. The 588th became highly decorated and respected, flying more than 23,000 sorties, dropping over 3,000 tons of bombs. Twenty-three night witches were awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union, although they were disbanded just six months after the war and not allowed to fly in the victory parade, given their planes were so slow. From 1956, after she retired from active service, their commissar, Yevdokia Rajkevich, took it upon herself to find the site of every single one of her girls that was downed, to mark the place and to pay her respects to each one of the incredibly brave night witches. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so ignorant and... Uh... So I'm so thankful for videos such as this. Wow. Wow. I Dang. like that it shows the full story. You know, it doesn't just glorify them. It also lets you know how much they lost as well. Indeed. Indeed. And the wow. number of sorties that they flew. Much unlike or actually quite a bit, unlike a lot of other bombing runs that you have that took place during the daytime with the male pilots where they would prepare, they would get ready, they would go on their run, they would come back, and they're done. Yeah. These ladies would go out, do the run, come back, fill back up, and go back out again. Remarkable. And keep doing that all night. Absolutely remarkable. The night witches. Wow. I love the idea that they cut the engines and they glided in. You know, that's just remarkable to me. Now, and, uh, I don't know if you caught it or not, but early on in the video, yeah. what, what I thought was kind of cool, as it's showing like the planes going by and you just kind of see the silhouettes, Yeah, they sneak a few silhouettes, actually look like witches on brooms going yeah, by. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> okay. I did see that. I thought that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, phenomenal. Just an, an amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful to, uh, to to know about it now. I mean, um, 
just so many holes in my education. It's amazing. Oof. Yeah, if if more classes could have been like this, I would have been valedictorian. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> just make it interesting to learn. Yeah, uh, it's um now obviously there are some classes and, and subjects that you're not gonna yeah, you know, you're not gonna make calculus overly interesting. You can try. But things like history, world events, that kind of stuff, you can maybe make a little bit more entertaining than than just here, memorize this, memorize yeah. that. Oh absolutely. We yeah, we're part of a grand and wondrous tapestry. And um I think it's a disservice to people to tell them otherwise, you know, True. when, when, you know, I mean, uh, we are all historians and time travelers for our time. And, um, yeah, I mean, what's not to love with that idea? I mean, yeah. Really? I mean, now this actually, this discussion gives me an idea. If you're up uh -oh. to another video tonight. Oh my. And everyone out there will have to wait and see what that is. Teaser. Well, well goodness. Drop the teaser in there. I anyway. Raise a pinky to that. Thank you guys out there for joining us. Let, let us know your thoughts down below. What other suggestions do you have? We appreciate all your suggestions, all your feedback. And a like, comment, and subscribe. And click on that little bell over there. That'll let you know when we have a new video out. It is greatly appreciated. But never pressured. Nope. There you go. He's Not jumping at, at you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody was nudging him from behind. Yes. <laughs> never pressure. Never pressure. <laughs> never pressure. Never pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, thank you guys again. Let us know all your thoughts. Indeed. Let us know where we can meet up with you when we go to Vakken, whenever that is. One of these days. Oh, and yes. how glorious it shall be. <laughs> yes. And if you're going to be in Philly for Avatar, let us know. Maybe, maybe we'll run into you and keep an eye out for us having a cheesesteak. I'm going to try to get that man there early so we can have a cheesesteak. Because I miss <laughs> those cheesesteaks. Ah, well, it could happen. I'm doing low carb, so I'll just eat the guts out of it. <laughs> okay. But I can Still a couple that. months okay. away. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank yes. you guys again for joining us. As always, be good to each other. Just Please. because. It's the thing to do. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> That's right. You know what else the cool kids are doing? Staying healthy. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Whether it's masking up, uh, definitely get your shots. And, definitely. Uh, you know, hey, we're not out of this yet, but there's enough people doing the right thing, doing the non-selfish thing. And I salute you. We salute you. So thank you. Uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, it ain't a train. So that's a good thing. <sighs> I, I agree. Very well said. And also, something else I always tell you to do, and that is to keep your eyes to the sky, because there is something up there, and it's watching. Might just be the space station, who knows. I'm hoping. Otherwise, it's pretty damn Orwellian. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but keep listening, comrade, because Stalin might be listening as well. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we went dark at the end here. Yeah, yeah. No, no, just, you know, there might be good things coming, so listen. <laughs> and there's good things up there, too. So there you go. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> you know, Orwell wrote uh, 1984 with Stalin in mind, actually. I did not know that. Uh, I am learning I'm, all sorts of things sure. here today. Anyway, that's all I got. Well, well, thank you, guys. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm.